Welcome to my pristine beach I found for only $158 a month rental and it's right there marked here and that's me. My name's Rob and in this video I'm going to share with you how I went house hunting for rentals in Sargao Island, one of my favorite islands of the Philippines, specifically Pacifico area. In this video I'm also going to share with you some shocking things I found along the way and there was a little bit of disaster that struck me. I'll also share that with you so you can avoid any pitfalls when it comes to traveling in the Philippines. Here's another view of my beachfront property. It comes with a bit of a twist in the story and there's a lot to unpack. So let's get started and I'm going to share it all with you and more in this bizarre video of traveling and looking for home rentals in the Philippines. We have a house there. Right. 10,000 per month. <laughs> which one? Which one is it? This, this, this one. one. Okay. Okay, house number one. This is in Santa Fe, near the eastern part of Sargao Island. Hi, I'm Rob. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm glad I made it. Yeah. I didn't realize it was so far. That's okay though, it's fine. Is there good surfing around here at all? Huh? Can you surf around here? Is there any surf spot? Ocean 9. Yeah? You don't know. It's only oh, there's Wi-Fi? Is that Wi-Fi? Yes, it's a pretty big... Pre prepaid. Is this the first time to come here? Uh, this, this far. I've never been to Santa Fe. Oh, like, I've never been this far. Oh, it's got AC. Oh, that's good. Back Where are you from? Canada. Wow. Yeah, long ways away. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been here? In uh, I've been, t I've been in um, Sargao now, like, uh, two months. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where I, right now I'm in Pacifico, but I was like, but I'm, I'm flexible. I'm open to like staying in like, you know, different places. So this place was 20,000 pesos a month. It had Wi-Fi and really close to the surf spots. Very quiet. All right, day two, before going on to the second home, I stopped at a cockfight with some friends. We wanted to see it for cultural reasons. I'm not really a big fan and big FYI here. Filipinos love to offer you beer and drink from the same cup and if you don't accept it's offensive so make sure you take that drink. And that's all I can show you of the cockfight because obvious reasons YouTube won't allow it. Now this flower is very unique it's only found in the Philippines it's unique to Philippines and it's edible. Uh, it's called the blue flower. You can make tea out of it. And uh, it's great for, it has some health benefits as well. And I thought it was really cool to show you this. I've never heard of it. And it makes a great garnish on a dish as well. All right, let's check this place out. Oh, thank you. Oh, cool. Let's look like. Um, there's a there's a bathroom there. Yeah, a bathroom. Oh, okay, and then you got your eight. Do you have Wi-Fi? So this house is. She said it's fifteen thousand pesos, and this is the this is the view outside the house. It's got my own AC, and I have a bedroom, bed, and there's a common kitchen area that I can cook with, and um, there's a lot of surf spots around here, and it's literally. So that's. The house right there so it's, it's about a 20 second walk to the beach here so 15,000 pesos that's pretty good for a room so uh, we'll keep looking though this house is in Burgas which is really north in Sargao so it's gonna be cheaper than maybe like General Luna so these are the kind of prices I was looking for something like this let's go check out the other ones All right. Also, as I traveled around the island visiting these different homes, I noticed there were these big fires that residents and locals are constantly lighting all over the island, randomly, whatever they want. There's huge smoky fires, big flames everywhere. They're either getting rid of garbage or clearing land. It's quite common. It's kind of comical because it's so um, illegal in Canada to just randomly light fires. But here they're so laid back about it. I just found it so funny. So the next home, number three on the list, is actually from a friend. She's actually living on the island and she's gonna tell us a little bit about the home she found 
for a ridiculous price. So tell us about your place you got. Yeah, so we're moving to San Isidro. It's a small village and um, we have a house there. Right. We a house there. And it's 10,000 per month and it's like the three of us and it's air conditioning. Insane. And, yeah, that's... but we have to pay electricity and water. So that's maybe like 5k extra. Okay. And it has air conditioning. Yeah. And then how long a drive is it to like back to here? Like if you want to go surfing oh, at this maybe beach? maybe three minutes. Yeah. Oh, really close by. Cool. All right. Thanks. Awesome. Maybe. All right, before we get to the next house, I just wanted to share a fun fact. Here in the Philippines, they don't use tomatoes with their ketchup. It's always bananas, banana ketchup, and actually tastes exactly the same. And a fun family outing means going out and spearfishing for the day on low tide. Not like back home in North America where we would sit on the grass and have a picnic blanket and maybe do a barbecue. The fun family outing here in the Philippines is to travel with your spear guns and go out on low tide where the fish get trapped in those little pockets of um, cut out coral. They can't get back to the deep water, so they're spear fish and then they have a nice cookout and barbecue right under the kubos and uh, that's a fun family Philippine outing for the day. One of the best resources I've used to find homes is this Facebook group called Siargo Long-Term Rentals Official. In Facebook, you can find tons of groups like this for whatever island you're interested in. And you can see that some people are posting for what their budget is. And then there's other people actually offering homes and rentals. And you can find all kinds of um, good deals. Now, of course, this isn't like getting a friend deal where if you know somebody but it's a good place to start if you're just getting started and you don't really know anybody yet. Facebook groups are a great way to find uh, some great rentals. And this is where I found a lot of good spots when I first got here. So welcome to my uh, little abode here on the beach. So the surf spot is literally, my favorite surf spot is 20 seconds, 10 second walk right there to the water. And then I have uh, my little tent right here and I have a gazebo in case the uh, heavy rain starts coming. If it gets crazy, crazy rain, I can go into, there's another bigger gazebo with a restaurant back in there. You can't really see it in the video, but it's there in case the rains get too bad. So I'll be here for the next 30 days. We'll see how this goes. Here's another view. So that's where I'm staying right there under that gazebo. There's my little tent. So I absolutely love it. Here's this is where I do my exercise and my surf mobility exercises in the morning. And then right here, I invite friends to come over and have bonfires at night and times to do yoga right here on the beach. Everything was going amazing and I was living in paradise for very little money, living a great comfortable lifestyle, surfing every day. But that's when things took an unexpected twist. I mentioned to you earlier in the video that there was a bit of a disaster that happened right after I moved into my little piece of paradise. And that is, I got in a scooter accident. So my scooter malfunctioned and I went flying off the bike because it stopped suddenly and I landed on the pavement on my shoulder. Broke my shoulder in an instant in two places and I was nowhere near a hospital or even a doctor when it happened. But luckily there was two Filipino locals that saw what happened and they helped me up. They put me on their scooter and took me to a clinic which was 20 minutes away and they were so nice and then they called me an ambulance then the ambulance got me to a clo the closest emergency room which was an hour away because remember i'm on a small island and the emergency room is in dapa which is <clears throat> a port on sargao island they did an x-ray right there and found out it was fractured or broken in two places and i needed to see a surgeon right away to get it fixed of course, there is no hospitals big enough or facilities big enough on Sargao Island to handle it. So I needed to sleep overnight with a broken shoulder in a homestay. And then early in the morning, I took a hour and a half boat with a broken shoulder to another island called Sargao City. 
And luckily, I had a really, really, really nice Filipino friend was working where I was staying, and she was nice enough to accompany me to the original, to the ER, and then eventually to the Sargo City Hospital. And that's where things got even more stressful because my insurance company was giving me a hard time and it was gonna cost around $2,000 US to get my shoulder fixed. And it was hard to contact or even call the insurance company because their free number wasn't working on Skype. So it was just very, very stressful situation. And the whole thing was a huge nightmare. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, the pain that you get from a broken shoulder. Anyways, luckily my sister, I got a hold of my sister. She was able to lend me some money for the surgery and things worked out. And now I'm talking to you five days later and I don't have any pain at the moment. I'm gonna be discharged from the hospital tomorrow and I'll go back to my little piece of paradise on the beach and it was just all a little glitch. You can see I just have a little strap and the swelling has gone down and I have a pin in my shoulder for two months but the pain's almost gone it's about um, it feels it feels great um, the lesson that I could pass on to any solo travelers is make sure you have very 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 good insurance and uh, you would want to make sure that they cover costs up front if possible get up make sure they have a reputation for actually helping you when you get into trouble. Uh, I had a company called Safety Nomad or Safety Wing or Nomad Insurance and they are a terrible company and I don't recommend them. They made things very stressful and I ended up having to pay out of pocket. I don't think I'm gonna get reimbursed. So it was, it was a real uh, nightmare on that end. But luckily um, things worked out and I was able to pay for it with my own money and I will now be heading back and living, enjoying the rest of my time here in the Philippines. So it's a happy ending story, and uh, I just wanted to pass that message along to others, make sure that, in fact, uh, make sure that if you are renting a scooter, check your scooter, check it over three times, make sure you wear your helmet, because stuff does happen, and make sure the scooter, it has if it has any little problems or sounds funny, ask for another scooter, Make sure there's scooter insurance that comes with the scooter. If they don't have insurance with the scooter, do not touch it um, because it's not worth it if something happens. So that's it for this video of Rob's Adventures and I will see you in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this content and I'll see you in the next one.